Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today I'm going to talk about the importance of maintaining accurate records when it comes to lot numbers and expiration dates. This is in reference to any kind of injectable medication or other medications that are administered in your office, including vaccines. Tracking lot numbers and expirations for vaccines is kind of a given because a lot of programs, especially in electronic medical records or in state registries, it asks for all that information. The lot number, the manufacturer, the expiration date, the NDC number, and then the location, the amount, all of that, right? The rights of, of medication administration. But I think people tend to get a little bit lackadaisical or not understand the importance of tracking lot numbers and expirations and manufacturers for other medications that are administered in your office. Now, it is not required in billing to provide the lot numbers and expiration dates, but it is required to provide the NDC numbers. That does not mean that it's not best practice or a patient safety issue to not be tracking and recording lot numbers and expirations for anything given to patients. Your inventory system should include information tracking such as lot numbers, expiration dates, manufacturer, etc. But I also feel taking it a step further and documenting that information in the patient's chart when a medication is given is also very important. I say this because there are oftentimes recalls on medications based off lot numbers from a manufacturer. And if there is a way in your system, especially to track this without having to thumb through individual pages or chart notes in a patient's chart to find out what lots they were administered, then it makes it a lot easier. Hopefully your EHR or EMR system has a place where you enter the inventory of the medications that you are administering and then you can run a report from there on which patients were given that specific batch of lot numbers and expirations. What I mean is there should be a place where you enter the inventory of medications in like a master setup behind the scenes of your system. And then when you go into the chart note to actually document that you administered or gave a certain medication or fluid or whatever it is, it pulls from that master list. So when you generate that report from your system, it will, t if you say timeframes or expirations or whatever, it will give you all the lot numbers and the patients who receive those. So if you get a recall on lot number one, two, three, four, five for Ketorolac, let's say, then you can run a report in a certain time frame and say which patients receive lot number one, two, three, four, five, and then it will generate that report so that you can do what you need to with it, whether it's contact the patient, report it to the FDA, um, have that report to give to your medical supplier to see if they will reimburse you for that bad batch. I mean, whatever it may be, it's really important in a safety thing. Now, there are some things that you don't bill for, right? So you might not bill for a diluent because it's included in the cost of the reconstitution of a vaccine, or you might not charge for normal saline that you put with another medication. But that doesn't mean just because you're not charging for it, that it shouldn't be recorded. You can create dummy codes in your fee schedules where you can assign it. So if you use normal saline for something, but you don't bill it out, at least it would be recorded. You could create a dummy code and then pull it into your chart note so it has the lot number and the expiration date. At the very minimum, if you're not going to do it to that level, at least have a main inventory list that you keep or your medical assistant or nurse keeps in the office recording every shipment of medication, injectables, mixers, whatever it is with the lot numbers and expirations and the date it came in. So at least if you needed to, you could at least look at your list 
look at the day that came in, look at patients on your schedule, figure out what they came in for and anticipate kind of like maybe what treatments they would have received for the reason that they were in. And you can at least go through and look at patient chart notes. And if you hand document the lot numbers there in expiration, at least you could create a manual list that way. Or you could just, you know, anticipate contacting all the patients within a certain time frame that had certain treatments that would have included that specific specific medication or mix or diluent or normal saline. The point here is patient safety, lowering your liability. God forbid if something were to happen and you were to get sued, they're going to be asking for this information. You don't want to show negligence in this. It might take a little bit of extra time. It might require more time of a staff member. It might require you to iron out some workflows to allow a staff member to have a little bit more time to make sure that they stay on top of this and all your charting and all of your documentation is updated and accurate but it's super important because that one time that one scary thing's going to happen and there could be a lawsuit or a possible lawsuit you're going to wish that you did this from the beginning so although it is a lot of extra work and although it seems daunting i promise you it does pay off and patient safety should come first no matter what it's part of your hippocratic oath that you take and that is one step towards patient safety is making sure that you're able to track everything and anything that is given to a patient so that if something were to go wrong god forbid you can provide information and be as fast at response to it and making sure that you're doing everything that you can to lessen any kind of poor outcomes as possible Honestly, if I saw a provider that was not diligent in this and not good at tracking that, I probably wouldn't see them because I feel like if you're not willing to take those extra steps towards my safety, what other things are you cutting corners on? And this is especially important in you know, practices that give a lot of injections or provide a lot of administered medications or treatments because the more you do, the higher, you know, probability of you having a poor outcome or having any kind of issues when it comes to patient legality things or, you know, lawsuits or whatever. And so, you know, just cover your tail. It's always important. I'm sorry some of this is a lot of work, but it's definitely going to pay off eventually. And hopefully you're never put in that situation. But if you are, at least you'll be sitting nicely and showing that you're doing your due diligence and trying your best to make things as less probability of bad things going wrong as possible. And things are, you know, out of your hands sometimes. I mean, look at all that normal saline a few years ago that got recalled because the hurricane hit in Puerto Rico, I believe, and the facility, something contaminated. I think that's what it is. And normal saline was really hard to find and they recalled a bunch of lot numbers and it caused a whole bunch of issues around the country. And so, you know, that was totally out of your control, but at least you would have been able to see which patients did get something from a possible contaminated lot. You were able to track and send back whatever you had on hand that was recalled and move forward from there. So if you have any comments, suggestions, questions about this topic, please leave it in the comments below. Smash that thumbs up button if today's video was helpful and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.